Yeah, this has been such a fun conversation. <laughs> Those are great answers. I want to know more about the effect of like five five MeO DMT on what the research has been, but we'll have to do that again. Yeah, we've we've modeled soon. some interesting states. I don't think anybody has done the type of data that we've done. I think even Tim was surprised when I said that. What we what we've what we've pulled out and like on the my computer, I mean, we've we've got the modeling of what what happens. We have the ten minute baseline on several of the videos that we animated using his his plugin, where you see the components firing with information Granger causality, and then you see at six hundred seconds, which is ten minutes, you see the hit, right? The person takes the inhalation within twenty milliseconds. You see this radical shifting transformation of active inhibition. That's what we were talking about when you walked up, that the brain is actively inhibiting itself. And that is astounding to me. It's actively not communicating. And in that silence, something wonderful emerges. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'll have to talk and about what, that. And what do you think is the wonderful thing that emerges in that silence? I think the magic of consciousness is in the interplay between empty spaces. Uh. Chopin mentioned that the magic of music, I think, is the space between notes. Uh -huh. I think there's, there's a very deep truth in that because we saw, that's what, I was, that's what I was explaining to him, I said, we saw the power drop out across the cortex. That makes no sense. Intuitively, you're going, oh my God, I'm visiting this, I'm visiting that. She's teaching me about my mother. I'm realizing this, I'm realizing that. I'm throwing up. I am, I'm, 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 I'm hearing the sound of creation. I'm, I'm witnessing infinite fractals of, of iterations of spirits before me. Well, yeah, that's what's going on in there, but I'm telling you out here, we're just like <laughs> It's a tremendous drop in power. And it's astounding. That's why I mentioned that, that's why I was wondering, my kind of secret theory is, is this an example of stochastic resonance? Which is when you take a very, very faint signal and how you amplify it is that you flood it with random noise. Think about it. If you take a very, very faint signal, like a very degraded photograph, and convert it digitally, and you amplify, if you shoot it with random noise, your, your random five hertz is going to enhance the existing five hertz and make it come up more. You see what I'm saying? And it's a, it's a tool used, I think, in Photoshop even, or the NSA definitely uses it to extract license numbers. Mm. But you take a faint signal of any sort, flood it with random noise, you're going to enhance the inherent signal. Okay. signal. Okay. And I think one of the things that we suspect, at least we, there's no, there's no royal we, there's no like I'm a part of some we-ness, maybe it's just me and me, um, is that the inherent noise in the brain is vital to our consciousness. Mm -hmm the inherent noise of little tiny things happening, I think in the psychedelic state, that noise is not noise. There's inherent information in there that gets amplified and gets experienced. That's where I think the secret is, or one of the pathways forward in understanding this stuff. And that could potentially also be uh, an analogy with our obsessive uh, use of the technology every time there's a moment of silence in our yes. lives. Yeah. And so if we were to not use the technology in those yeah. little moments, there, that would give the space for that to come up. It's not that unusual. I mean, just Let me just say this little bit here. 1797, William Wordsworth wrote a beautiful series of poems, um, Expostulation and Reply. I think it's either 1797 or 1798. And I don't know, the, don't have the poem memorized. I, I, I just know it, a little bit of it. But his friend comes up to him in the poem and says, dude, why, why are you just sitting there wasting your time by this lake? Come on, you know, go read books, man. This is where it's all at. I mean, I'm paraphrasing it. Mm -hmm. But um, he responds, he says the, something like, the eye cannot choose but see, the ear cannot choose but hear our bodies will feel what it will with or against our will. So why should I be seeking when I in wise passiveness here can learn more of moral and of evil than all the sages can teach me? So that notion of wise passiveness in attention or in meditation and listening enables, I think he was spot on, because to me, you know, and people like, I'm sorry, your generations, oh, we've invented this, we've got this. Like, dude, no, 1798, William Wordsworth was sitting by a lake and the wise passiveness feeling the vibe of what's important and learning. Yeah. 
Even Shakespeare hints at this in his writings. I mean, when Gloucester was blinded, you know, and his son said, hey, let me help you. He says, no, I have no way because when I had eyes, I could not find my way or something like that. So mm -hmm. they had put his eyes out and he was feeling sorry. He says, no, when I had eyes, I still was lost. Now that I have no eyes, I know where I'm going. <laughs> so there is something about wise passiveness, about meditation, about right. silence, about, right. and I think in psychedelics, what's happening is that the practicality of lowering certain power levels in the brain emerges a different type of knowing to emerge.